Hi gang! I'm going to show you how to make a USB power cable. Usually you need to make one of these when whatever you want to power has an odd connector. In this case I'm plugging into this motor controller board's male pin header. So I need a USB cable with a female pin header on the other end. The first step is to find a USB cable. I found this one at a thrift store. I cut off the unwanted connector. Then make a slit with a sharp knife. And then peel it back. Inside this one is some shielding. So I pull all that back too, until I expose the four wires. The white and green are for data. The black and red are the power ones. We'll be using only the black and red, but I carefully stripped some insulation from all of them anyway, so I can show you something in a minute. Don't press too hard with the knife, or you might cut all the way through. Inside the USB connector, the two pins that reach closer to the opening are the power pins. The pins that start further back are the data pins. The power pins reach closer to the opening so that when you plug it in, you're sure they get power before the data pins do. That way you have power before it's time to transfer data. But we're not using the data pins. We can prove that the power pins go to the black and red wires by using a multimeter. I put it on the resistance scale and push the button that makes a beep when the resistance is low enough. That's called a continuity test. I put alligator clips on one meter probe and then connect to the red wire. I connect one end of another wire with alligator clips to the other meter probe and a small wire to the other end. One of the power pins causes the meter to beep, but not the other pins. So the red wire is connected to one of the power pins. I switch to the black wire and get a beep with the other power pin. The white wire causes one of the data pins to beep and the green wire causes the other data pin to beep. Now to attach the female pin header. I prepare a female pin header with two holes. I have a video all about pin headers if you're unfamiliar with them. I cut some heat shrink tubing and slide that onto the red and black wires for later. I then solder the wires to the pin header. Which one goes where doesn't matter. With the heat shrink pulled over the wire so that no metal is visible, I use a heat gun to shrink the tubes. Before finishing it up, I need to mark which side is positive. So I cut a narrow strip of white tape, put it on the red side, and paint it with a red pen. Then I cut the white and green wires shorter, since we won't need them. There's little chance of their copper wire touching, but I put heat shrink on the ends of them anyway. I cut a little extra foil from kitchen aluminum foil and wrap it around the wires. I pull back the shielding and the cable sleeve, but it no longer covers everything. So I put some more heat shrink over that to make it neat. You can use vinyl electrical tape or something else if you don't have any heat shrink tubing. And here's the finished USB to female pin header cable. Time to test it. I plug the USB connector into a phone charger battery bank and the other end into the motor controller. It works. Well, thanks for watching. See my YouTube channel for more informative videos like this. You can support these videos either through Patreon or through a one time donation. And if you like these videos, don't forget to subscribe, give a thumbs up, share with your social media, or leave a question or comment below. See you soon!